what are some of the significant differences when profiling an NBA athlete um, compared to an an AFL footballer? Uh, I might lose a few friends here, but probably not a lot. Um, AFL football, um, there's a little bit more, there's more aerobic, it's more running based sport. So Mm -hmm. naturally you'll do more fitness, aerobic fitness testing and um, profiling from that standpoint. Um, But at the end of the day, they all actually do pretty similar movements. Um, football's done over a longer time frame. So you're starting to look at um, the physiological differences from a aerobic sport versus a game of basketball, which is very anaerobic, but mm-hmm. still has an aerobic component. But if you're looking from a weight room perspective, they all do the same sort of movement. So other than the fact that basketball might have a few more tendon issues um, than what footballers might have, they want to improve their performance, we'll call it, uh, athletic performance. Do, do is, your, is your methods looking pretty similar, similar similar um, approach in terms of you're, you're improving their efficiency, you're improving their capacity, or is there a fair shift in how you go about it? No, because I think that's what you're – we're here. That's our job. Our job's to keep pushing these guys. And um doesn't matter, like, realistically, the older athletes start to get, they start to decline in different areas. And our job as S&C coaches is to stop that or at least prevent um, that happening at a fast rate. So, yeah, we st- I still profile all these guys. Um, I may, may not do all of it, um, but I think uh, we'll still sprint guys. So if you're still sprinting guys, you may as well profile them. If you have the access to view motion, which um, there's probably a lot of clubs, AFL clubs around, you can still get those splits. Um, so there's your times for your, force to, uh, your horizontal Force velocity profile there. What are some of the challenges from a workload point of view in, in and how do you and what are your sort of effective strategies in managing, you know, individualizing a group of 43 athletes, for example? Um, yeah, it's not, M- it's, NBA, your, your smaller squads. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's it's not easy, but it's about I suppose being prepared and understanding where you can get stuff done in within the schedule, knowing mm-hmm. over preseason, all right, where's a great time to get whatever test you want done is that your change of direction assessment so the change of direction deficit where can i get that is that part of a move like a warm-up can we prep guys and do a, uh, an athletic development session which i'm assuming most teams probably do or they just call warm-ups different things now but can you build up and prep that over the course of two weeks to then go boys right this is our test today so you're getting that done um, like I said, you can surf the curve in the weight room with some jump profiling. Um, gym aware is a great, like, velocity-based training. For those more challenging athletes or maybe athletes, like you said, there's an education piece that's important, but perhaps there's a disconnect between what you've identified as an area that they need most important as bang for buck to, to maximise their development and, and they feel intuitively, no, it's not actually, I, I really I hate that exercise or whatever it is, this, that I hate blood to pliers, I really want to do this. Uh, sort of how do you is there an example you can talk to or, or sort of how do you sort of approach that i guess when you feel as the expert no this is what you need um yeah to bridge that gap and come together and ultimately make them feel like they're heard um but yeah. also you're you're giving them the best program yeah like honestly that's a big part of what i did for four years while i was overseas um basketballers are allergic to the weight room um so it was about building a relationship, and I spoke about it earlier, is understanding their why. Why are they doing what they do? Um, Once you understand why they're doing it, some guys it might be they play basketball because they love it. Some guys it might be this is their way of helping their family out. For other guys, it's as a kid, was keeping them off the streets. So once you understand their why, then you're starting to build, you're breaking down that barrier that you already have with them. Um, and that's no different to here either. Like you, once you break that barrier down, they might start to trust the process a little bit more. You mentioned like view motion, uh, for those that aren't aware of it, um, yeah, what is it all about? How, what do you like about it as a you know, artificial intelligence coming into elite sport? Um, and then I guess other areas as a bit of a segue for future trends in high performance. Yeah. Uh, obviously you mentioned drop jump testing and using force plates. Um, yeah. What's sort of your stance on objective approach yeah like i've come from a a piece where 
I think you work with coaches in front office, um, they're very emotional around decision making. So if we can be as objective as we can, like sometimes the eye does lie. So if we can be objective with as much information as we have, we can go back to them and, and actually provide fact. Um, so that's what I, I like a little bit around the force plates, tank tech, force decks, um, force frames, whatever you stuff like it. It adds a piece of objectivity to something that's um, very subjective to the eye, I guess. Um, the view motion piece is only something that um, I've been exposed to in the last couple of years. Um, I like it from the kinograms that you get out of it. 